invoking the blessings of the Lord of the Universe, Sachitananda Parabrahman, the producer and director of this cosmic movie show. This film, Who Am I? A Scientific Spiritual Search is based on a book by Swami Prajna Aranyaji, popularly known as Yogi Protoplasm. He is a spiritual scientist and a disciple of Ramana Maharishi and Yogi Rama. He teaches deep Vedantic truths simply with science and conducts intensive meditation retreats, inspiring seekers to attain self-realization. An austere yogi, he has been living only on milk for the last 35 years. When you ask him why he calls himself yogi protoplasm, he shows you cells under a microscope. And what is each cell made of? Protoplasm. All plants, animals, human beings, insects, bacteria, etc. are also made of protoplasm. Protoplasm is one but has taken the shape of many forms. Its description is similar to that of Brahman. Through the discovery of protoplasm, scientists are corroborating the Vedantic principle that there is one soul in all, whether you are rich or poor, black or white, male or female. There is a unique unity behind the baffling diversity. Lesson, cultivate divine vision and learn to see the one behind the many by radiating cosmic love and living in the spirit of Vasudev Kutumbakam, that the whole world is one family. Yogiji has taught us to prefix our divine name, Sat Chit Ananda, before our earthly names, so that we remain humble and don't fall in the trap of name and fame. The body is a perishable cage, and however rich or famous it may become, it will certainly disease and die one day. So by affixing Satchidananda before our earthly names, our focus will remain on the imperishable soul, which is one in all. Join me on a scientific voyage of self-discovery. Our ancient yogis were just like modern scientists. They raised questions like, Who am I? Where did I come from? Where was I before I was born? Where will I go after I die? What is the real goal of a human birth? To answer all these questions, yogis performed intense tapasya. What is tapasya? Tapasya means purification of mind through meditation and selfless work. Though our yogis say our true divine nature is Sat Chit Ananda, but in real life we find we are mostly unhappy and stressed. Why? Because our minds mostly are very gross, impure and extroverted. Mind must be purified, concentrated and introverted so that it can rediscover its true divine nature of absolute bliss. To walk on the spiritual path, two main qualifications are necessary, Viveka and Vairagya. Viveka means one must have discrimination between the temporary and the eternal. Wise people understand that this world is temporary and full of suffering and strive for liberation by leading a simple and selfless life. Vairagya means one who is striving for liberation from the repeated cycle of birth, old age, disease and death. Does not squander one's time in sensual pleasures and is detached from the worldly drama. Most of us are searching for happiness in wine, women and wealth. But that rare Upanishad says, a mind which has been purified by selfless work, when that pure mind sits in deep japa and meditation, 
the bliss that it then experiences is billion times greater than the bliss of a billionaire who has enough of 3W, wine, women and wealth. So, a pure mind is really a passport to becoming a bliss billionaire. Example, a thief was traveling with the Swami in a train. The thief saw the Swami counting a lot of cash and putting it in a bag and locking it. When the Swami went to the toilet, the thief started searching for the key of the bag. He searched everywhere on Swami's side but could not find the key. Exasperated, when the Swami came back, the thief blurted out the truth. Swamiji, I must confess to you that I am a thief and wanted to steal your money. Please forgive me. But please do tell me where you have hidden the key to the bag. I am dying of frustration. Son, I have hidden the key under your pillow. Now, the thief has searched everywhere, but certainly not under his own pillow. Similarly, out of ignorance, man searches for happiness outside him in wine, women and wealth, but real everlasting bliss is only within, in the bliss of the soul. So learn to tap that soul bliss through daily deep meditation. Panch Kosh Vishleshana Source Tetreya Upanishad Yogis say we have three bodies. Gross body, subtle body and causal body and five sheets. The five sheets are called the Panch Koshas they are 1. Annamē Kosha 2. Pranamē Kosha 3. Manomaya Kosha 4. Vigyanamē Kosha 5. Anandamē Kosha The real divine nature of man can be found if we go beyond these three bodies and five sheets. Annamē Kosha a single cell incorporates your script and the cinema will unfold later. Trillions of cells now, but it all started with a single cell. From beginning to end, body is an astonishing feat. Skeleton is a wonderful feat in mechanical engineering. Different kinds of engineering principles are used to make this skeleton. Who made this skeleton? Science is only 2,000 years old, but skeletons are being constructed from millions of years. Who is this great mechanical engineer? Body produces chemicals. Police dogs can identify you by smell. That's why in criminal investigations they use dogs because each body has a unique smell. Each body also gives out rays the colors of which can be seen through Kirlian photography. Someone whose aura is red is very materialistic and someone whose aura is purple is deeply spiritual. An enlightened master will have a white aura. Body is a great chemical factory also. Alexander Fleming discovered antibiotics during First World War soldiers' wounds would become septic. A medicine which could kill bacteria was needed. For eight years, Alexander struggled to find this medicine. One day he had a cold. His nose was running. Some nasal secretions fell in his culture accidentally. Next day he saw in his petri dish all bacteria had died. He found a medicine in his own nose. Bacteria had got killed through nasal secretions. The first antibiotic was made in human history. There is a factory in India in which hundreds of scientists are working producing antibiotics. But in your own nose, antibiotics are being made. Who is this great biochemist? Now close your eyes and visualize your own skeleton. It is made of 206 odd bones of different sizes. Mentally take your x-ray photo 
and carefully examine your skeleton. Body is a moving commode. It has so much dirt inside. It sweats and produces repulsive odors. Yet, we identify ourselves so much with this perishable cage and pamper the body so much. Most of human life is spent pandering to the needs of the perishable body. Now, ask yourself the eternal question, Who am I? Am I this perishable body which will certainly disease and die? Or am I a divine, eternal soul full of bliss, peace and cosmic love? Who am I? Can this inert skeleton do anything by itself? There must be some intelligent power or Chaitanya Shakti operating this skeleton. Affirm the idea that you are not this perishable cage made of flesh and bones which will certainly disease and die. You really are an imperishable soul which is eternal, all blissful and all pervading. A formless, nameless being, a Chaitanya Shakti, an intelligent power. By doing the skeleton visualization daily, you will get detachment and you will try and lead a more simple and selfless life. Ramana Maharishi says, the one who wants to cross the ocean of samsara, that is, get out of the cycle of repeated birth, old age, disease and death, and still only pampers the perishable body, is like a fool who embraces a crocodile to cross a river. The crocodile will certainly kill the fool. Death Visualization Now close your eyes and visualize the death of your own body. Imagine four people carrying your dead body to the funeral pyre and burning it. Now what remains of you is ash, but the I am or soul is still there. Nobody can visualize his own non-existence. To visualize it, you must be there. Lesson, you are pure existence and awareness, Sat and Chit. You are not this perishable body. If you remain as pure Sat and Chit, you will experience Sat, Chit, Ananda, the bliss of being. Pranamay Kosha Prana Pratyavikshana or observing the breath visualization. Look into your own nose and your own breathing process and try and find out whether your breath is running through both the nostrils or through only one nostril. If it is running through one nostril, find out which nostril is more active, right or left. When the left nostril is more active, it is called Chandra Nari in yogic terminology. And when the right nostril is dominant, it is called Surya Nari. If the left nostril is more active, mind will be more meditative and peaceful. If right nostril is more active, mind is more argumentative. When the breath flows equally through both nostrils, that state is called Sushumna and is an indication that the mind is deep in meditation. According to yogis, number of breaths per minute is limited to 15 or 16. Yogis have found that as the mind becomes purer and subtler, number of breaths per minute decreases. Now close your eyes and visualize your blood circulatory system. Hundreds of blood vessels are transporting blood to every part of the body. Very great biochemical knowledge of physics, chemistry, etc. is needed for constructing various organs and make them function. Who is the designer of this remarkable machine called human body? Blood is a transport system and carries oxygen to every cell in body. 
There is a very intelligent distribution process. Brain cells are more active, so bloodstream gives more oxygen there. Different parts of body have different requirements taken care by blood intelligently. There is something intelligent in hormones in blood which knows exactly how much to give where. When you take food, carbohydrates get digested. Complex sugars get made and then glucose. The intelligent transportation system knows how much glucose to push into bloodstream and supply to every cell according to requirement. The energy stored in glucose gets liberated. How did glucose get energy? Who made these chemical reactions that convert food into energy? Evidently, there's some highly intelligent, mysterious power combining all sciences together who is constructing and running this amazing human body. Lesson, cultivate humility and understand that you are not the doer. You are only an instrument of God. If your heart stops pumping, can you attend your next meeting, even if it is with the Prime Minister? You can't. So vanquish your ego with the sword of self-knowledge. Mahatma Gandhi shook the entire British Empire, but he never said, I did it. He always said the Lord's will was done through him. Greatness lies in being humble and simple. Today scientists know the secret of genes and how these guide human beings and all living beings. Genes in the human body are very intelligent molecules. If your nose is round or sharp, it is all due to your genes. If your eyes are black or blue, it is because of your genes. Genes determine your voice, your gender, etc. There are 30,000 genes and 46 chromosomes. 23 chromosomes come from the mother and 23 chromosomes come from the father. All 30,000 genes are located in these 46 chromosomes. Now, scientists know which gene is on which chromosome. They can manipulate genes. Medical colleges have a medical genetics branch. There are many genetic diseases that cannot be cured by medicines because they are due to some genetic disorder. Genes have got a code language called genetic code. Scientists today by manipulating genes have started cloning plants and animals also. Isn't that amazing? Now examine your own body's life cycle. We were all a single cell some time back. Initially there were two cells, one male and one female. The bigger one is female cell. A male cell has a tail like a tadpole. Then the tadpole cell enters inside and unites with the female cell. Zygote is formed by the union of two cells. Then the cells start dividing. One becomes two, two becomes four, and four becomes sixteen. Multiplication of cells starts and trillions of cells are formed. They arrange themselves in a very systematic way. Who is guiding the systematic formation which leads to a baby being born? At embryonic stage, all living beings look alike. When they grow, they become different due to genes. There is a universal law that governs all living beings. Who designed this genetic code language? Who designed millions of species? Who designed the spectacular? spectacular variety of birds, animals, insects, etc. According to yogis, a single mysterious power called Sat Chit Ananda Paramatma is running this cosmic movie show. In Bhagavad Gita chapter 10, Lord Krishna is asserting, I am the producer and director of this cosmic movie show. I am there in every living organism. Mano Mai Kosha How to make the mind still 
A still mind means a thoughtless mind. Swami Vivekananda gives some methods in his book Raj Yoga on how to still the mind. Buddha Bhagwan also gives the same method. First step. Sit calmly and close your eyes. Don't try to control your thoughts. Simply observe your thoughts. Keep reminding yourself you are not the mind. You are not the thoughts. You are Sakshi Chaitanya, the observer of the thoughts. Simply observe the good and bad thoughts as they arise in the mind. This exercise called Mano Vikshana appears to be simple but is very difficult because we have developed the habit of associating ourselves with our thoughts from so long but regular practice will help you make the mind still. Mind works at four levels. Level 1. I am or sense of I am mine. First attachment starts with the perishable body. My body. Then my husband, my son, my money, etc. If something happens to your husband, you are shattered. But if something happens to neighbor's husband, you are not bothered. So the root cause of all sorrow is attachment. Destroy this eye disease with the sword of self-knowledge. Level 2 Chitta Mind works at level of Chitta and converts thoughts to Chitta Vasanas like a recording in a CD. Thousands of pictures and voice can be recorded in a CD and pen drive. Chitta is something like that but far more superior and can record millions of birds. For example, there was a lady in Bulgaria. She was blind but she had the ability to read the mind of other persons. A parapsychologist called Liz now came to this lady to test her. He made a record of all her predictions and verified whether they came true or not. She told someone that he would have a male child and after two years the baby would be murdered by someone who lives close by. And it happened exactly like that. Police found the murderer living close to the baby's house. So though this lady was blind, she was able to read the entire script of the person standing in front of her. Now where is all this information written? Yogis say it is written in the Chitvasanas of people and operates something like a CD-ROM. Just like pictures and sounds are recorded in a CD-ROM, Chitvasanas record a person's script according to his past karma. Chitvasanas manifest in forms and thus this lady was able to recognize all the Chitvasanas and foretell the future. Level 3 Mind where thoughts arise due to Chitvrittis. Level 4 Intelligence plays discriminatory role, decides what to do in any situation. Spirit of inquiry. Scientists are researching on mind and getting new knowledge. Vivekananda says all knowledge comes out of samadhi or superconscious state. Example, Archimedes discovering law of specific gravity. A king had a gold crown made. The king was suspicious that the blacksmith had put a lower base metal in the crown. The king asked his court to find a solution without destroying the crown. Archimedes was a famous inventor of his court. He tried to find an answer. One fine day he entered a bathtub and water overflowed. He jumped out shouting, Eureka! Eureka! He got an idea that revealed to him how much base metal was in gold. That day he jumped out of tub and ran naked in joy. He was unaware of the world around him. Yogis call this state Bhava Samadhi. 
When he reached Bhava Samadhi state, answers automatically came to Akhmadi's mind. Siddhartha was a prince and had everything possible materially. He had a palace, a beautiful wife and son, and could have spent his whole life partying. But he saw old age, disease and death, questioned life and did research on sorrow and how to overcome it like a research scientist. He also had a great spirit of inquiry. The ability to inquire about the ultimate truth of life makes the human being uniquely different from all other forms of life. One must have a spirit of inquiry. Scientists have sent spacecrafts to moon and beyond and continue to build bigger machines to find the God particle. But despite the development of super proton, anti-proton synchrotons and now superconducting super colliders that contain enough niobium titanium wire to circle the earth 16 times, scientists have no more of an understanding of eternal questions like where did we all come from and where will we go after death etc than the first philosophers in human history. As the idea of consciousness as something important gradually seeps into discussions of physics and the cosmos, new consciousness based theories of the universe are getting their day in the sun. One such theory is biocentrism. Biocentrism, the theory of everything, is a concept proposed in 2007 by American doctor Robert Lanza, a scientist in the field of regenerative medicine and biology. Biocentrism theory researchers explain that stem cells behave in such a way as if they have intelligence within. That intelligence our yogis call consciousness or Sat Chit Ananda. It is the presence of consciousness that is enabling cells to become this tissue or that. From centuries, mystics have been talking about consciousness. Biocentrism is championing consciousness and not the Big Bang Theory. This is the standpoint of all yogis also. Scientists first refuse to recognize consciousness. Biocentrists also raise questions like, do plants have consciousness? One police officer attached a polygraph or a lie detector machine to a plant. When the plant was watered, it was happy. When negative words were spoken to the plant, it showed fear. Plants showed a very human-like response. Luther Burbank, an American mentioned in Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramhansa Yogananda, demonstrated that when he showered love on cactus, thorns stopped growing on it. Have you seen a carnivorous plant? They derive most of their nutrients from trapping and consuming animals or protozoans, typically insects. They usually grow in places where soil is poor in nutrients. In carnivorous plants, leaf is not just used to photosynthesize, but also as a trap. These plants show that plants are also capable of creative thinking. Illusion Due to Maya Shakti, illusion is arising. One appears as many. Example Bring three mirrors. One concave, second convex and third an ordinary mirror. Now if you look at the ordinary mirror, you will see a normal face. If you see concave mirror, face is very small. If you see in a convex mirror, face looks very big. In order to understand secret of Maya, observe your face in different mirrors. Your face appears different in different mirrors, even though your face is same. Similarly, Maya creates illusion of differences even though we are one. Illusion can also be seen in the following example. What do you see? Two faces or a flower vase. Our problem is, who am I? What am I? From where have I come? 
Electromagnetic waves are present everywhere. Energy travels in the form of waves. Light energy, sound energy, magnetic energy, etc. Scientists have found that all these different energies differ in wavelengths and all different energy waves are together known as electromagnetic spectrum. The smaller the wavelength, the greater energy associated with them. So a single energy is manifesting in wide variety of energy manifestations. Vedanta says there is a unique unity behind the baffling diversity in the world. Electromagnetic spectrum is a spectacular example for this Vedantic principle of unity in diversity. This Vedantic principle is observed at all levels in the universe. Brahman is one and yet it manifests in all diverse forms, visible and invisible. The Gita extols the virtues of oneness, Vasudev Kutumbakam, that the entire universe is one. Just as the one ray of white light refracts into seven different colors when passed through a prism, Brahman is seen as the diverse world when seen through the prism of the body, mind and intellect. You are strongly entrenched in feelings of otherness. Most people are not living in a spirit of cooperation, but cutthroat competition. Once upon a time, a teacher wanted to test her students. She held a feast for them. The happy students sat down on the table. The children said their prayers. They were about to eat when the teacher said, Wait, dear students. Here is a small test for you. Please eat, but do not bend your arms. Now you may begin. The students were puzzled. How could they eat without bending their arms? Some of them got angry. Was the teacher playing a trick? Suddenly, a bright student spoke up. He quickly told all the others. Let us each feed the student in front. In this way, all of us can eat with our arms held straight. The teacher came back. She saw all the students enjoying the feast. Each student was feeding the students seated in front. The teacher was happy. Her students had passed the test. If the students had not helped each other, all of them would have missed the feast. So, by helping somebody else, you only help yourself. Spiritual growth is not measured by the number of scriptures mastered or pilgrimages undertaken. It is measured by the experience of oneness you experience and live. One energy is manifesting as this baffling diversity seen as the world. The differences are due to the difference in wavelengths only. Energy is one but becomes many in the living world, thus corroborating the Vedantic dictum that there is a unique unity behind the baffling diversity. Mind your mind. To do any work in the world, your mind must be in a proper condition. That is why Swami Vivekananda said, If I have to start my education again, I will not start reading many books. I will focus on improving my concentration. If you have a concentrated mind, you can read many books in no time. Example, Swami Vivekananda once went to a library and asked for a book. Give me a book on world religions. Here. After one hour, Swamiji returned the book. I have finished the book. You can have it back. How is that possible? How can you finish such a thick book in such a short time? Okay. You can ask me any question from the book. To the librarian's amazement, Swamiji answered all his questions. The librarian was shocked. He asked Swamiji his secret. Swamiji said he did not need to read sentences or paragraphs. He reads whole pages in a glance. This is what is called photographic memory. 
We also can improve our concentration powers with regular meditation. Thought power. Mind has two layers, conscious mind and subconscious mind. Conscious mind is only 10%, subconscious mind is 90%. One can reach super conscious mind through regular chanting and meditation. Mind is also a bundle of thoughts, but we mostly communicate our thoughts with words. But supposing I could communicate directly from my thought to your thought, is it possible? Yes, yogis can do that. Parapsychologist scientists are now doing research on this phenomena called telepathy. Vigyana me kosh. Yoga consists of arresting mental tendencies. If you succeed in doing that, you will reach Sakshi Chaitanya or witness state. Mostly we are under the influence of one or more vrittis or tendencies. Example, let us examine a piece of cloth. Is it not just a collection of threads? If all the threads are removed, nothing of the cloth will remain. So the thread is real. Cloth is just a mental projection. On further analysis, the thread is nothing but cotton spun and twisted with a machine. The spinning machine converts the cotton into thread. So cotton is real object and no such thing called thread is present. Again, on analysis, the thread that appears to be real now seems to be a superimposed projection. On further analysis, cotton is nothing but hair of a cotton plant seed. And what is this hair-like structure? Nothing but cell wall. And what is this cell wall? Nothing but cellulose, according to a chemist. And what is cellulose? Nothing but a collection of three atoms. Carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So, on analysis, the previous thing that appeared to be true becomes unreal and false. Now, if we go still deeper, what are these atoms? Nothing but energy waves with different wavelengths. This energy is being given different names. Atom, cellulose, cotton, thread and cloth. So, energy alone is real. Rest are superimposed mental projections. Our great yogis also reach this great truth by tapasya and purification of mind that the universe is pervaded by one supreme intelligent power. Sarvam Shakti Mayam Jagat is a Vedantic dictum which scientists are corroborating saying everything is made of energy. Since millions of years, sun is radiating energy. Earth rotates around sun in exactly the same field. Who is regulating these laws? Who is the lawmaker? If you examine subatomic particles or galaxies, everything is governed by mysterious laws. Scientists like Albert Einstein have also reached the same conclusion that all matter is nothing but energy. Energy alone is real. Example, Prime Minister Modi is speaking in Delhi, but through TV you can see him anywhere on the planet. His form is reduced to waves and waves can travel everywhere. Thus his form can appear in crores of houses through TV. Now take a magnet. A magnet has a positive and negative pole through which it draws to itself pieces of iron or steel within a certain range. When a magnet is rubbed against a piece of non-magnetic iron or steel, the latter also becomes magnetized. Human beings can also get magnetized through close contact with magnetic personalities for whom they feel great reverence for. Great saints like Ramana Maharishi and Yogi Rama, who were mostly in silence, had the power by their very presence to dispel doubts in their devotees' minds. Take the law of diffusion. Diffusion is the net movement of a substance, example an atom, molecule, etc., from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. Now open a perfume bottle. It'll diffuse scent because molecules are traveling. 
Similarly, magnetic waves can also travel. A hologram is a three-dimensional picture made from laser. Doctors of the future can train on holograms. Universities in America are partnering with Microsoft to bring HoloLens to classrooms. Designed to merge virtual with reality, HoloLens uses cameras and sensors to project interactive holograms onto the real world. Holograms can show internal organs in three dimensions and test knowledge of medical students. Isn't that amazing? A hologram is a photographic picture that is composed of a great number of small parts, all of which contain the picture as a whole. When we break up the hologram in many pieces, we end up with as many small but complete pictures of the whole. Similarly, every cell of our body contains complete information about the entire mind-body system. Each of the hundred billion cells that make up our body contains complete version of the original DNA that was the source of the entire body. Similarly, according to Upanishads, the individual soul is nothing but a kind of mirror or hologram of the universal soul or Brahman. Each individual soul thus contains the cosmos as a whole. Take any cell, it has a nucleus and genes. A human cell has 30,000 genes. One cell from a person's skin can be taken and developed into a full human being. From a single cell from cloning, entire human body is reconstructed by scientists. So human body is like a hologram. The smallest unit of human body is a cell which has 30,000 genes. So also the body of every living organism in the living world is made of cells. Scientists have cloned various animals and plants from a single cell. So all the bodies of living organisms are like hologram. Similarly, like a hologram, Sat Chit Ananda Parabrahman is reflected in each soul or each soul is a whole or part of Sat Chit Ananda Para Brahman. Example, a dog entered a hall which had mirrors everywhere. The dog started attacking his own image. The dog hit here and there and got injured. Similarly, ignorant people see different bodies and start fighting with each other. But a man of wisdom only sees the one soul in all and radiates cosmic love. Angulimal de Coit came to kill the Buddha, but the Buddha with his compassion was able to bless him and elevate him, for he only saw the dormant divinity in the de Coit. Anandamaya Kosha means pure I am state. We are in that state when we are in deep sleep condition. When you wake up in the morning, you say you slept very peacefully and happily, though you did not have any bank balance, spouse, etc. in deep sleep. From where did you get your peace and happiness? In deep sleep state, all attachments to names and forms is missing. You are pure soul only. In deep samadhi or superconscious state also, you alone are there and one with the universal self. Yogis make all kinds of efforts to attain that state of absolute bliss. Now go within yourself and ask yourself these fundamental questions. Who am I? What am I? From where have I come? Rishis claim that realizing I am or soul is secret of eternal happiness. The true nature of I am is not confined to a single body, but is beyond galaxies. It's infinite. Go within. Find out secret of I am and the problem is solved. Learn to discriminate between the real and the unreal. Real must be present in past, present and future. Hundred years before this body was not there. Hundred years later this body will not be there. Then how is this body real? 
Even the sun will disintegrate sometime. Only Sat Chit Ananda Para Brahman is eternal and infinite like energy. Science says every three years, every cell of our body changes. Cells and body are continuously dying and new ones are being made. Gita also says from birth to death, our physical body is continuously changing. We give up our childhood body to become an adult. We give up adult body to become an old age body. Then the body diseases and dies and changes into a new body by way of rebirth. The life inside us is in continuation though. It is a form of energy. According to science, nothing is destroyed. Things just change from one form to another. Example, ice when heated can become water. Water when heated can become steam. And steam when cooled can be made into water again. Similarly, energy can neither be created or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another. You think you are this illusory body, but body is changing continuously from baby to youth to old age. I am will continue as same in all stages. You are that I am. You have no death, only body dies. Just as you change clothes, so also the soul changes bodies according to karma. Grief is due to wrong identification with the body. Remember this constantly that you are really an eternal soul. Discriminate between the ephemeral and eternal. Scientists explore external nature. Yogis explore internal nature. Both come to same conclusion that energy alone is real. Pranava Nad Anusandhan or research on Om Mantra. Mantra sadhana is the most beneficial method to keep your mind, body and soul in perfect harmony. The vibratory sound of Om is happening in every atom of the entire universe. This vibration is constant and unaffected by a person's race, religion, etc. It is thus not surprising to find its reminiscence in all religions in some way or the other, whether it is Amen of the Christians or Amin of the Muslims. Om has three letters, A, U, Ma. A symbolizes waking state, U symbolizes dreaming state, M symbolizes deep sleep state. Om taken as a single unit stands for Turiya, which is the fourth state. Mandukya Upanishad reveals the secret meaning of Om, which is the name of Brahman. It gives an analysis of the three states of waking, dreaming and deep sleep, and how to reach the fourth state, Turiya, whose nature is Sat Chit Ananda, and is the substratum for the three changing states. Pain cannot touch the one who gets established in Thurya state through deep meditation. Meditation on Om with devotion and meaning leads to realization of Brahma Gyan. Chant Om with the spirit of inquiry and devotion for you are invoking the blessings of the Lord of the Universe. Every time you chant, ask yourself, Who am I? Am I this perishable body, which will certainly disease, decay and die? Or am I a divine child of God, made in His image of eternity, immortality and everlasting bliss? Who am I? Mantras have power. Supposing I abuse you. You idiot, stupid fool. If one abusive word can incite you to violence, imagine how much power God's name will have and how much capacity it will have 
to burn the impurities in the mind and elevate us. Bhagavad Gita chapter 8 says, Uttering the one syllable Om, the symbol of Brahman, and contemplating on me, he who departs leaving the body attains the supreme goal, moksha or liberation. Meditation destroys all causes of sorrow, for the root cause of any sorrow is attachment to the perishable body. So chanting of Om helps to break attachment to the perishable body and helps one to attach to the soul whose nature is Sat Chit Ananda. Once established in one's soul blissful nature, one learns to watch the ups and downs of life like a drama and be mentally unaffected. For example, Ramana Maharishi had cancer but was not dependent on doctors and medicines and remained immersed in the bliss of Samadhi till his last breath. There was a divine peace and joy radiating from his face even though his body was tormented by pain. Once he was meditating in a cave and insects had eaten away his thigh, yet he was unaware of the body and totally immersed in the bliss of Samadhi. Meditation is the ultimate medication for any problem facing man. Mantra's effect on water. Dr. Emoto, a Japanese scientist, performed a series of experiments observing the effect of mantras, words, prayers, music and environment on the crystalline structure of water. He filled two jars with water. Jar A was subjected to several hours of insulting and abusive language while Jar B was exposed to positive vibrations through chanting and prayer. The jars were then frozen. After freezing, it was found that the crystals in jar A were ugly and deformed, while the crystals in jar B were like beautifully shaped diamonds. If this is the effect on water, imagine the effect of positive vibrations on the human body since it is 60% made of water, and imagine the effect on a fetus which is 90% water. That is why our yogis promote Garab Sanskar. That is, if a pregnant woman does a lot of chanting and meditation, she can put spiritual impressions in her child right from the womb stage. So we find modern scientists corroborating truths what our ancient yogis stated. In fact, our rishis also spoke of Garba Dhan. That is, if a couple want to attract a spiritual soul in their womb, they should chant, pray and meditate first and then try for a baby. Garba Dhan and Garba Sanskar should be taught to all would-be parents so that they can raise kids who are simple, selfless and spiritual and not greedy and corrupt as we see in society today. Brahma Bhavna or expansion of consciousness. What do our yogis mean by the word Brahman? Brahman literally means very, very vast. But how vast is Brahman? With the help of astronomers, we can understand what real vastness means. Should we say Brahman is the size of the planet Earth? But the Earth is only a small planet and part of the solar system. Is Brahman as big as the sun? But Sun and Solar System are very small compared to a galaxy. Sun is also a medium-sized star and they say there are 100,000 million stars in our galaxy called the Milky Way Galaxy. 100,000 light years is the diameter of the galaxy. What is a light year? Light travels at the speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. You must travel at that speed for one year to be able to measure a light year. But scientists have discovered other galaxies also, other than our Milky Way galaxy. The nearest galaxy, they say, is Andromeda. 
Andromeda is only 2 million light years away and is double the size of our Milky Way galaxy. Hubble telescope seems to be discovering newer and newer galaxies. So scientists are now concluding that the universe is expanding. They seem to now understand the term infinite because they cannot find the end of the universe. Vedanta has also described Brahman as infinite. So now you can try and understand the vastness of Brahman. Modern scientists also talk about very, very minute things. Take a centimeter. It has got 10 millimeters. If you take one millimeter and put it under a microscope, you will see a micrometer, which is a thousandth part of a millimeter. Electron microscopes are now being used, which can magnify bacteria 100,000 times. So if you can imagine the smallest something, this Brahman is smaller than that. And if you can imagine the biggest something in the universe, this Brahman is bigger than that. All the Upanishads talk about the greatness of this unimaginable Brahman. Galaxies will also disintegrate someday. Thus, our yogis say, only Sat Chit Ananda Para Brahman alone is real and eternal. It has no form, but all forms are because of its presence. The law of karma. As you sow, so shall you reap. Buddha Bhagwan used to relate this story. There was one millionaire who lived in a very big palatial house, but he was a very big miser and had cheated many, many people. He buried some of his gold in one corner of the house. He did not even tell his son where he had hidden this gold. One day the miser suddenly died. The son searched everywhere for the gold but could not find it. After some time, an ugly leper boy was born in a poor slum. The leper boy started begging. One day the boy by chance came in front of the same palatial house in which he was a rich person in his previous life. By God's grace, he recollected his past life and went inside the big house and started telling his son that the house belonged to him. Beat this boy. Throw him out. Buddha Bhagwan happened to be passing by and intervened. Stop. Do you remember where you have hidden gold in your past life? Yes, I will show you. Here, it's under the bed. So it is proved that the slum boy was indeed a millionaire in his past life. But why was he so poor and wretched in this next birth? Because he had been very selfish, cruel and mean. He had been demoted in his next birth. No one can escape the law of karma. As you sow, so shall you reap. If everyone understood that by harming somebody else, he's only harming himself because one soul pervades the entire universe, no one would harm another and all crime and corruption would stop on this planet. But because people are ignorant of the law of karma, the reincarnation theory and self-knowledge, crime and corruption flourish on this planet. Most people are religious but not spiritual. They quarrel over religion, but there are infinite ways to the infinite. They do a lot of pujas or pray to fulfill some worldly desire for a son or money, etc., etc. That is called commercial devotion, trying to do business with God. Spirituality, on the other hand, implies living a simple and selfless life and seeing and serving the one Lord in all, whether rich or poor, male or female, white or black, healthy or sick. What is the root cause of worry? It is your short-sighted vision. Expand your vision about yourself, about life and this universe. This universe has been there for at least 19 billion years and is a part of a billion galaxies. If you observe the cosmos, our solar system is like a small dot. 
There are billions of galaxies and one among them is our Milky Way. So the Milky Way is very small and in that is our planet Earth and in that there is you. Then why do you give yourself so much importance? In this universe, your planet is insignificant and you are even more insignificant. You may think you're a hero, but you're not even a zero. In millions of years, billions of people have walked on Earth. There are seven billion people on this planet today and many are being born every day and many are dying. When you see your life from this bigger context, your worries fade into insignificance. Why are you so obsessed with I, me, mine? Attachment to the perishable body is the root cause of all misery. My money, my family, my property. But even this body is not yours. It will certainly be burnt to ashes one day. Hardly 80 years you live on earth. Out of that half your life is spent in eating and sleeping. What is 80 years in terms of eternity? When you expand your vision, all your worries will disappear. So burn your ego in the fire of self-knowledge and become a bliss billionaire. Om chanting can be done in six ways. Now sit with your spine erect and close your eyes. One, Vachikam. Do loud chanting. Vachikam Omkara should be done in such a way that sound appears as if coming from navel. If done correctly, breathing slows down and ultimately Kumbhaka or stopping of breath is attained. Second step, Upamshu. Repeat the mantra without making an audible sound while making an O shape with your lips. Third step, Chitajapa. Chant the mantra mentally. If your stomach goes inside and breath almost stops, then you have attained natural Kumbhaka. It means you are chanting correctly. Mental chanting is considered the best, but is the most difficult as the monkey mind tends to wander. Fourth step, Anahat Nad Anusandhan. Do the Shanmukhi Mudra. Plug your thumbs in both ears, four fingers on eyes, middle finger below the nostril and rest on mouth. In this mudra, External noise is totally cut off and you are able to listen to Anahatanad or sound of Om as it is originating from inside. Upanishads describe that Anahatanad is continuously going on inside but we are not able to listen because our minds are totally extroverted and impure. You may see lights and colors within as mind becomes subtler. Fifth step, Brahma Bhavana, expansion of consciousness. Imagine your body filled with an awareness of a circle of love, light and joy. Keep expanding the circle of love, light and joy. Now imagine your whole house filled with the circle of love, light and joy. Keep expanding the circle of love, light and joy. Now visualize your whole country filled with the circle of love, light and joy. Keep expanding. Now visualize your whole planet Earth floating in this circle of love, light and joy. Keep expanding. Now visualize the whole solar system floating in this circle of love, light and joy. Keep expanding. Now it includes the Milky Way galaxy also. Awareness, awareness, awareness everywhere. Keep expanding. Awareness to include Andromeda and other galaxies also. 
the entire universe is filled with awareness listen your divine father is the circle of love light and joy in which worlds and galaxies are floating like bubbles you and your divine father are one you and the infinite are one you are not this perishable body subject to old age disease and death but pure awareness which permeates worlds and galaxies you are a part of sat chit ananda para brahman keep reminding yourself that you really are a divine eternal soul full of bliss peace and cosmic love sixth step prajna pratyavikshana this is an open eyed meditation keep your eyes open don't look outside look within center your attention on awareness Remind yourself that you are awareness. Observe the observer. If you succeed in this meditation, the objects outside will appear hazy and finally disappear.